In today's fly casting video, I'm going to give you some tips for freshwater fly fishing anglers making that trip to a saltwater destination. Hi, thanks for tuning in. I'm Captain Chris Myers. I'm a full-time fly fishing and sight fishing guide down here in Florida. I'm also a certified fly casting instructor. If you're just joining this channel, be sure to become a subscriber for all my fly casting and fly fishing tips. And today I want to talk about some of the things I see happen on a regular basis to my freshwater fly fishing clients who come down here to the salt for the first time. These are some things that you need to prepare yourself for both mentally and by physically practicing. Now it may not be practical because of weather during the winter that you can't get out of practice before your spring fishing trip. But you can certainly practice indoors. Just use a piece of your rod practice going through these motions, practice these things we're going to talk about in this video so that they're already ingrained in your mind instead of getting on the boat and asking for some tips and then completely forgetting all of them the second you see a fish, which is exactly what's going to happen. If you stick around to the end of this video, I'm going to give you my number one easy tip for catching more fish when sight fishing in salt water. In today's video, we're gonna cover things such as distance, speed, accuracy, and then some other minor details that people often forget about. Even if you could make the cast long enough, accurate enough, and far enough, if you make a couple of these other mistakes, either before or after the cast, it could certainly cost you the fish. First, let's talk about distance because that's the thing that most people probably are concerned about is will they be able to cast far enough and I certainly get some people who can barely reach 30 35 feet that's probably not going to be far enough if you're struggling to hit that distance what I like to tell my clients is you should be able to comfortably cast 50 feet with two three at the most backstrokes using a five weight a seven weight a nine weight if you can't do it easily and consistently then you're going to struggle because you're going to be thinking about the distance all the time and not be able to concentrate on some of the finer details so if you're not confident 100 percent you can mark it on your fly line and mark it out on the ground make sure that you can cast 50 feet in two or three strokes five or six or seven back cast is way too much to get out that far we're going to start with 20 feet of line outside our tip so that when one stroke we can shoot some two we're out well past 50 feet if we need to be. Most of the shots we're taking at fish are 60 feet and in. A lot of them are in that 30 to 50 foot range. Some of them are closer than 30 feet. If you can cast 50 feet, you can certainly reach all those fish inside there. And with one little 10 foot shoot of line, you're at 60 feet without any additional effort. So make sure that you can cast 50 feet. If you can't, there's probably something going on with your loops means your loops may look something like this where they're kind of non-existent and if your cast is going around like a windshield wiper you're not going to be reaching that 50 foot mark certainly not regularly and accurately which is what we're going to talk about next one thing that's so important when sight fishing in salt water even for spinning rod anglers is accuracy if you cannot put it exactly where that fish is you're not going to get a bite fish that are tailing, which means their nose is down in the bottom, tails out of the water, you're going to have to be mere inches, if not almost touching their nose. So when you practice, you have to use a very small target. The smaller the target you use in practice, the easier it'll be when you see fish or certainly a group of fish. The only way I know to consistently make accurate casts in overhand casting is if the back cast goes up, the forward cast goes down so the back cast unrolls traveling up forward cast travels out and down and when it straightens out it's right above the water if i make a cast that's level i could have some great loops if i make this cast up here and i let it go it's going to come tight bounce back towards me land absolutely nowhere near the intended target high in the back low in the front high in the back, low in the front. My false casts unroll the same place I'm going to let the delivery cast unroll. This, I mean the same height. So I don't want to make my false cast way up here. 
and then decide on the last one, okay, now I'm gonna put it down where the fish is, and then you see how I yanked the bottom out of that loop. Very, very common mistake. False cast, decent loop, decent loop, no loop. Make everything consistent and the same from false cast to delivery, but you have to be going up in the back, down in the front, up in the back, down in the front, then follow through. Even though that fly is unrolling inches above the water, my rod tip is stopping above my head on the forward stroke. Up, out, up, out. That's what makes the cast. Here's where I follow through to start fishing. I wanna be down here fishing. I don't wanna be up here fishing. That's why we follow through in case we need to make another cast or we're going to move the fly. So, but the actual cast, and the loop itself is formed from here to here. So it's still up high, but the loop is traveling over the tip of the rod down towards my target. Work on getting your back cast up, your forward cast down on all strokes, not just the last one. If we're going low in the back, the only place we're gonna get that good loop is up in the front. Probably the number one mistake casters are making on my boat is their back cast goes low and then they're trying to make the cast go low in the front. So they go down in the back, down in the front, have absolutely no loop. And the more frustrating it gets, the harder they do it and the closer it lands to the boat until it just becomes tiresome on your arm and extremely frustrating. If you're able to try to practice with the same size rod you'll be using on your trip. Contact your guide or contact a local fly shop. Find out what size they use most. If you only ever use a three weight at home and all of a sudden you went on a tarpon trip and they give you a 12, that thing's gonna feel like a telephone pole to you. If you only use threes and all of a sudden you got sevens, even that is a big jump. The technique is the same, but it's gonna feel a lot different. So try, if possible, to get a borrow a rod from someone if you can and at least make some casts with the rod that size. When we're casting, it should go up in the back, down in the front, up in the back, down in the front. And there was a cast at about 40 feet that landed extremely accurately. It lands right above the surface of the water. The wind's not gonna blow it off course. And when I'm making those false casts, I can see where that's going to land. If I false cast up here, not only am I gonna have to make a radical change to deliver it, I can't really tell, am I over my target? Am I too far, am I too short? on giant fish, let's just say a 100 pound tarpon, the distance from the tip of his nose to his eye is a foot or less. So if you miss by a few inches, you're attacking them in the eye instead of coming in front of their face. Very important that you're gonna be able to tell where that fly is going to land when you make that delivery. Now we talked about distance, we talked about our accuracy. The final thing, and this gets a lot of people in trouble is the speed, and this happens for my spinning rod anglers as well as the fly cast anglers, is the amount of speed you're gonna have to have. Once you see that fish and it's close enough to reach, the clock starts ticking, and you're gonna have a very limited time frame to get that fly in their face and get it moving. If you're making false casts like this and just waving it back and forth, not only is that fish going to see the line in the air, see your rod waving around, feel the boat rocking back and forth, something's gonna happen and about your fifth false gas, it's gonna take off and you let it go and you were a second too late. You need a technique to start with the fly in your hand. If you cannot have it dragging under the boat, catching grass, catching on the bottom, getting stuck in the trim tabs or in the back of the boat, you have the fly in your hand, then you have to be able to get that to the fish with two or three back casts. If I start with 20 feet of line outside my tip, if I have a nine or 10 foot leader, a nine foot rod, now I'm almost at 40 feet just by laying it out one time. If I have another 15, 20 feet of line off, it's gonna be very easy to make one extra stroke and shoot that line. Now I'm at 60 plus feet. Have to have some kind of technique. Here's the one I use. It was one of the very first YouTubes I made. I'll put the link for it right up here. And you can check out how to do this. It's called the Saltwater Quick Cast. I have everything in my hand, so it's not 
dragging under the boat. One, two, three, four. That's how quick you want to be getting to those fish. Minimize the time that fly is waving back and forth in the air. If you don't have a, such a technique, and most times people haven't considered this and never had the fly cast quickly, it'll stand with the fly dangling in the air kind of like this. Now they see the fish. It took me four casts to make that same, so it was double the amount of time. If you're struggling with some of your casting to begin with, then you're at six or seven strokes to get it out there, and the fish is usually gone after the third or fourth. If you get it there in two, that way if you miss, you may be able to pick it up one time, move it over a few inches. Pick it up one time, move it over on the other side. Especially the fish that are digging in the bottom, and you need to be super accurate, one lift up, one lay down, put it right back down. No need for waving it back and forth. Can't begin to count the number of times I watch people get out far enough, they're over the top of the fish, and they just keep on false casting. Just keep on doing them, let, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Let the fish go, and then they let it go. And one less set of false casts, they'd have been in a huge school of fish. Minimize your back and forth, get it out there as quickly as possible and practice that in your mind. If you can't go out and practice, you can think about it in your mind. I'm just going to go one, two, three, four, follow through. Our delivery is the most important part. It doesn't matter how great our false casts were. If we mess up the delivery, our delivery is the most important part. It doesn't matter how great everything was. If we mess up the delivery, one, two, three, four, follow it down. What we don't want to do is go one, two, three, okay, where the fish are, and then it lands right off the tip of your rod. We covered the three main things, distance, speed, accuracy, super important. You're going to apply to all your fly fishing and sight fishing in salt water. Some of the finer details that get people in trouble, even though they make great casts, so they covered the first three things, they made a great cast, and then one of these things caused the problem. You gotta practice your hook sets. Most freshwater guys just lifting up on the rod. In salt water, most of the time, that is not going to get you a hookup. It just yanks the fly away from the fish and it doesn't drive it in his mouth. When we get our bite, we pull straight down the line. To make the cast, Strip, strip, strip. We're having to move the fly. If this isn't something you do, you should practice this as well. Practice moving that fly. You have to make the fly move. We're not throwing it in the river or stream and letting it float along. You are moving that fly. All that movement is done from below my stripping finger above the reel. Strip, strip, strip. I have to make big strips. I raise it up. I can make big long strips, but it's always from in between my stripping finger and the reel. If you're not used to stripping, practice that. You don't even need to be outside. You can practice stripping. The other thing you want to get in the habit of is the second this fly goes down to the water, you are putting that line immediately under that finger so that you can begin stripping. We never want to be in a position where we let it go and we do this. I've seen so many casts that were in the right spot a couple extra feet of line went out or it got wrapped around the reel or it was just the slack from their tip to the water and they reach up here, finally get the line and one, two, so the fish is swimming by the fly and the fly has not moved one inch yet because I had to strip all this mess in. Always want to have a tight line when it lands. It's tight, I can immediately move that fly upon my first strip. Never ever shoot it out, let it go not have control with your left hand. We talk about stripping, you practice that, you can practice your hook, hook sets inside. So those are things you don't have to have a fancy rod, you don't have to be out where you can cast. You can practice doing all these motions inside your house, get them worked down into your brain so that you don't have to think. We've already covered these things. If you're trying to think about your speed and you're really concentrating on the speed, you're so happy you made that cast, you forget and you let it go and you forget and let go of your line and now you miss that fish with a perfect cast 
because you didn't have control of your line. You don't want that to happen. Another thing that you will find on most flats fishing trips is some kind of stripping basket on the deck where you're stripping that line into the basket or maybe they have a stripping pad and you strip it onto that so that it does not wind up under your foot, over the side of the boat, in the water, in the cockpit, caught around something else. We put that basket there so that it lands in the basket and it always comes in and out. It always comes out easily and goes out all the way. If you don't have that, it will find a way underneath your toe at the worst possible moment. You put that basket wherever you would naturally strip. Some people like to strip right in front of them. Some people like to strip over here to the side. So many times people put the basket in front of them and they'll strip over here onto the deck and they get up to make their next cast and it gets caught underneath their foot because they didn't put it in the basket or vice versa. They put the basket over there and then they end up stripping here. You got to strip where the basket is. Practice that. You don't have to be outside again. You can practice stripping line. Put a, put a box or something there. Get used to putting it inside that box, inside the basket. Mine's a, a pop-up laundry basket. I have a video on how I made that so you can kind of see what it looks like. Get something, practice putting line inside the basket so it doesn't end up under your foot. Briefly touch on the double haul. So this is something that a lot of freshwater anglers think they have to have, but you really don't. A double haul certainly can make my loops more well-defined. They certainly speed up my line, helps me get through wind better if it's traveling faster, helps me get to my target better if it's traveling faster, but it is not a necessity. We can make great casts, no haul whatsoever, hit that 30 foot mark every single time, no haul needed. For the most part, I find that those who don't use a double haul on a regular basis and go on a saltwater trip and try to start doing it adds another layer of confusion and the haul is usually done with improper timing or just all together incorrectly and it makes your cast worse instead of better. If you think your cast is pretty good, you wanna add the double haul. I have some videos on how to make that haul. So our double haul, the double haul looks kinda of like this. So we're speeding up that line without having to use more speed and power with our rod hand. It definitely is not a necessity. I'd much rather have an angler who can nail that 40 foot shot every single time than the guy who can double haul and get it out to 80, but it takes him too long and he's not very accurate. And my final tip that deals with standing on the boat, remember we got one more left to go, I'm gonna show you here and tell you about in a second, is getting your mind wrapped around using a clock to spot fish. It seems so ridiculously simple over and over and over. If you ask any sight fishing guide, how many times they've told people, on your right, one o'clock, and they're staring over here and staring over here on the left at 10 o'clock. A lot of us don't use regular clocks. Everything's digital nowadays. All the guides will have 12 pointing at the boat. One, two, three, four, five, I mean, nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two, three. You're generally casting within that half that clock face. So get used to in your mind, the guide says 10 o'clock, Boom, God says one o'clock, you're over here. He says nine o'clock, you're over there. Think about that, visualize that on the deck so you're ready to point there in a second. Another very helpful thing for fly fishing in salt water when you're sight fishing is being able to cast in more than one direction. And by that I mean most anglers only cast from 12 o'clock over to nine o'clock because a right-handed angler make cast in this manner and they can hit all those targets over there but what if all of a sudden there's a target over here not only are they having to turn their feet all the way over here which makes squeaky noises on the deck alerts the fish but now you're trying to cast over the top of the guide over the top of the steering wheel and generally your hands up here like this which is not how we should be casting it's probably not how most people you cast and you're making this weird cast that most of the time doesn't work what I recommend is to cast the same as you always do, except we're going to let it go 
on the back side. By that I mean this is the front of my boat. I'm facing towards 12. There's a fish over here at 2 o'clock. Instead of me turning my body and casting this way, I'm going to make my forward cast over here and let that thing go on the back cast. Now because I'm going to let it go and I need it to be accurate, it has to unroll above the water. We already talked about this at the very beginning. The back cast, which would be this way really, so the opposite cast has to go high so that I can go low on my delivery. That's the generally switched around from where you would usually cast forehanded. Have to think about that, have to visualize that, have to practice that motion because most people, if I say let it go backhanded, this is what they'll do and it goes up there and lands absolutely nowhere near where they meant it to land simply because they let it go way up there instead of down. When we're going to make a backhand cast on the right hand side of the boat, our forward cast goes high and the back cast goes down or you switch into sidearm mode which is more likely what I would do. I would have the fly in my hand and as I'm ready to cast I can let it go on either side. If the fish is over on that side I just start making sidearm casts and I let it go with the rod parallel on both sides it unrolls out to the side. Either way, you're going to cast high on the stroke going away from the fish, low the one towards it, or completely sidearm. You will be able to target all the fish on this side of the boat that most people do not get a shot at. By the time the guide spins that boat all the way around so you could make your regular forward cast, if that fish popped up within that 20 to 50 foot range, you're not going to be able to spin that boat all the way around. They're going to see you, feel you, hear you. You have to be able to make those shots on both sides of the boat, something a lot of people aren't used to doing. Again, something you can think about, visualize, practice the motions, even if you can't get outside to actually do it. Well, those are my top tips for fly casting salt water. If you're coming there as a freshwater angler, but I told you I'd give you my number one tip, and that is if we're going to be sight fishing the flats, you have to be able to do the sight part. And in order to do that, you have to have the proper eyewear and especially the correct color. So many times I get people that show up with expensive gray lenses, cannot hardly see any of the fish. They really struggle throughout the day. I give them a pair of my glasses and it opens up a whole new world. So these have a, a rose, a reddish color tint. These are the RCI Optics Mosquito Lagoon frame with the 780 lens in them. Outstanding flats fishing lens designed for flats fishing. A less expensive pair of reddish, brownish, amber lens normally works better on the flats than expensive pair of gray lenses. So be sure to have something, but try not to come with the gray lenses. That'll really help you see the fish as you have to see what you're casting at, otherwise you're playing blindfold golf and hope that it goes in and you, you know how good that's going to work. So to improve your chances, you have to be able to see that fish before you start making the cast. Having the proper eyewear is going to make all the difference in the world for you seeing that fish. If you want some other tips on how to tune up your cast, I have my entire common fly casting mistakes playlist. These are the kind of casting errors I see all the time. If you're struggling in any way with your cast, one of these might be able to help you.